Hi, in this problem we're given a polynomial and a value of c. And it says, use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find p of c. So let me remind you what the remainder theorem actually is. It's pretty simple. It just basically says if you have a polynomial, say p of x, and you divide it by um, x minus c, then the remainder is just p of c. So a very, very useful fact, very powerful. Um, so in this case, uh, c is negative 2. So we're basically going to divide by x minus c. So in other words, we're dividing by x minus negative 2. So we're dividing by x plus 2. And so we have two ways of doing that. We can use long division or we can use what's called synthetic division. Actually, the question says to use synthetic, so we should use synthetic. Let's do it that way. And so when you're using synthetic division, because we're dividing by x plus 2, you start by switching the sign. However, in this problem, they already switched it for you, so it's even, even better. Let me switch colors here. So we'll start by writing the negative 2 here, and then I like to draw like a little box like this. And then you write the coefficients of your polynomial here. So if there's any missing, you have to use placeholders. And that's why I picked this example, because this one has things missing. So first you do the 6. And then there's no x to the fourth term, but there needs to be one here for the process to work. So if you do like a plus 0 x to the fourth, it really is there, right? You just don't see it. It's invisible. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 0 there. And then here's x cubed, so then we'll put a 10 here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> We're missing x squared, so I'm going to add a 0x squared, and that will give me a 0 here. Then we have x, which is just going to give us 1, right, because it's 1 times x. And then the constant 1. Wow, pretty intense, right? So 6, 0, 10, 0, 1, 1. 6, 0, 10, 0, 1, 1. Okay, then you draw a line like this. And then the first thing you do in the synthetic division process is you take this number and you just bring it down, so 6. And then you start the multiplication process. So you do 6 times negative 2, that's negative 12. And then you add, and you do it again. Negative 12 times negative 2 is 24. And then you add, so 34. 34 times negative 2 is negative 68. You add, so you get negative 68. Numbers are getting big here. 68, negative 68 times 2, well, 65 times 2 is 130. So it's going to be 1, 136. Yeah, 136. Big numbers, right? Yeah, and you can always check. Like, you can go back to basics, right? Old school. 2 times 8 is 16. Carry the 1. 2 times 6 is 12. You add 1. 136. Yeah, old school. Add these, you get 137. And then times 2, it's going to be negative this time. It's going to be uh, negative 264, right? Negative 264, I believe. And let's just check. 137 times 2. Let's go back to that old school math. 2 times 7 is 14. Carry the 1. 2 times 3 is 6. So that's 7. 2 times 1 is 2. Oh, 274. Look at that. My old school math saved me. Yeah, right. 37 times 2 is 74. Yeah, bad mathematics. All right, so you add these and you get negative 273. Good stuff. That's the answer. That's actually p of negative 2. That's what the remainder theorem says, right? Because this, this is the remainder, right? This is the remainder when you complete the synthetic division process. So kind of a harder example because we had the missing placeholders, but whenever they ask you to use the remainder theorem and they say use synthetic division, all you really do, right, is you take this number and you just put it here, you know, fill in the coefficients. If you're missing any, don't forget to put the zeros. That's the trickiest part. And then just be really careful here uh, and don't be like me and mess up with a multiplication by two. <laughs> so I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.